Welcome to the George Manufacturing Summit. Man, I am so excited. I just can't stand it. It's a great day. Another great day at GMA. We're just getting started. We've got a fantastic day lined up for you guys. Um, we're going to talk about one. Some of you guys, who, raise your hand if this is the first summit that you've attended with GMA. Raise your hand. Kind of get an idea. Okay? Okay. Um, it's a lot of brand new people. Raise your hand if you were at the 2007, if you can recall, 2017, two years ago. Raise your hand. 2017 summit. Perfect. So some of you guys are going to see some slides that you saw before, but I think you're going to understand why it connects today. Very unique opportunity. So we're going to talk about one. There's a lot of stuff we can talk about, but um, being able to focus. Some of you guys know that that's one of my strongest attributes is focus. The rest of y'all are laughing. No, those actually no are laughing. But, um, but we are going to talk about one today. And the one is manufacturing success in Georgia. Our goal for the day, if you take away one thing from this event today, is you will understand that, that, we're, that we're making this happen. Manufacturing success every day. We're going to share a lot of statistics with you throughout the day. Um, but we're going to break this down. Manufacturing success in Georgia. All of us know, you know, Webster tell us, tells us the definition of manufacturing is taking a raw product, use a machine and convert it to a finished good. Manufacturing, pretty simple, right? But the next word is a little more tricky, success. Think about success. As many people are in this room, there's probably that many definitions of success. But my question for you is, what is your definition of success? Think about that for a minute. Every now and then you need to pause and decide what success means to you. Reflect. For me, man, I'm looking at it. Success is being able to give people the opportunity to have experiences that they couldn't have otherwise. And you guys are part of that success. But I want you to think about what your success is for the day. Think about that. Let, let that soak in for a minute. What is it that you want to walk away from the day with? You got it? Some of you are still struggling. I can see it in your eyes, but that's okay. But think about that. Um, so what's your definition of success? And then what is your goal for today? When you walk out of here, what will you say that, man, it's, today was a successful day. It was a time well spent. That's the one thing that all of us have exactly the equal um, access to is the same amount of time. You're going to hear some people that have really leveraged and maximized their time on the planet. You're going to hear some of the best people in the, in the industry, best, best leaders in the state. They're going to share with you what their goals were and, and how they accomplished them. Again, harking back to manufacturing success in Georgia. So for today, what's your goal for today? Now, our mission, we got a pretty simple mission. Our mission is to help support and grow manufacturing in the state of Georgia. We got a variety of different ways that we're going to do that. I'll talk about that in just a second. But um, I do want to want to ask you: raise your hand really, really high if you know, uh, if ever heard of these two people back 1908. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of William Klein or Peter Martin. Now, 2017 folks, I'll raise your hand because this is the same slide as I used last year. <laughs> but we're going to go back through that a little bit. I'll tell you a little bit, of, a little story behind William Klein and. and um, and Peter Martin. William Klein worked for a manufacturing company. His boss was Peter Martin. William was um, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty open-minded. His neighbor invited him to take a tour. Back in 1908, his neighbor invited him to take a tour of the Swift Meatpacking Facility. Now, the Swift Meatpacking Facility was in Chicago, and at the time, Chicago was the hub for processing uh, meat. So uh, they bring it all into Chicago. They had these meat processing facilities, these, these uh, slaughterhouses. They'd, they'd process the meat and ship it all up and down the East Coast. Fed the nation. And these guys were really, really good at it. And, again, William was working for a manufacturing company and was invited to come see what Swift was doing, the Swift meatpacking facility. And Swift was doing something a little unique. They were outperforming 10 to 1 all of their competition with the same floor plan, same footprint and the same employee count, but outperforming them 10 to 1. There was something going on, right? Who would want to hear about that? Raise your hand, right? If 
you got your competitions doing that, man, you want to find out what they're doing. Now, he was not in the meatpacking business, but his neighbor invited him to come take this tour. They walked through, did a tour. They saw something really, really unique. In the Swift Meatpacking Facility, they were processing meat in a whole different way. Used to, they, they, they brought, brought, the, brought the meat in, and one butcher would do all the, all the work on a, you know, a, a, to process it. But at Swift, they had it on a conveyor. So they'd hang them and slide them down, and one butcher would do one slice and move it to the next person. One per, you know, they'd do one process, and they'd send it to the next person. And they called that the disassembly line. Pretty unique name, I thought. And, and he said, I think there's something... I think there's something very interesting here. I think there's something that we could maybe repurpose. So he talked to his boss, Peter, and said, I want you to come out here with me, check this thing out, see if, see if you're seeing the same thing I am. So Peter came out, went with him, and took a tour. They both looked at it, and they said, yep, yep, we're convinced that there's something here. Don't quite know what it is, but we know that there's something here. So they took it to their boss, Mr. Henry Ford. And they said, I think there's something something cool going on. I think there's something that we can use. So, now Henry Ford was a man of means. He was at the right place at the right time, and he had good people around him. And they said, we, we can figure this out. Now, Henry Ford is given credit for creating the modern-day assembly line, right? All of us. It's like when you think of assembly line, man, Ford was the guy that did it. But it was from, from ideas that he shared, and this is well-documented, ideas that he picked up from other industries, and he applied them properly. So what does the Swift Meatpacking Facility in Chicago have to do with what we're doing here today? Well, again, because of the modern-day assembly line, they were able to outproduce 10 to 1 what they had just years previous with the same amount of people. They figured out this assembly line thing. And a lot of people don't know, but there was a Ford factory in 1914 that was opened in Atlanta, and they were producing the Model, uh, the model T's. Really cool deal. And so, so I was doing a little bit of research on the history of manufacturing, and I was like, man, that is cool. But it wouldn't have happened without that connection. Now, now believe it or not, that facility is no longer producing automobiles. Now, it kind of looks like it might be, but, uh, but they're not producing automobiles. But, but because of that connection, because of that understanding, somebody else is, right? Our buddies over at Kia, over in West Point. And we got one of those tell you rides right there. They can't produce those things fast enough, right? So, we, and, and, and Stuart Countess is going to be our lunchtime keynote. He's going to share with us a little bit about what's going on at Kia and how it's impacting Georgia's economy and the manufacturing. And, and so this is kind of how that, that all connects together. But without that invitation by William Klein's neighbor to invite him to go take a tour of something that was really cool, We'd be in a different planet, I believe, in a different country. Now, would somebody have eventually figured out the assembly line? Yeah. We got smart folks. We'd have figured it out eventually. But been at the right place at the right time with the right people makes magic happen. But it does take one. So again, we're here, Georgia Manufacturing Alliance. We're here to support Georgia's manufacturing community. We do that through, we help manufacturers build their network, build their connections. We help them buy local. Manufacturers tell me all the time, man, I'd love to buy local, but I have a hard time doing it. So, so we put together, ooh, wow, back that up. Um, but, uh, but by building local, buying local, and also best practices. I mean, so those are some of the things that we, we help share throughout the, with, throughout the year. So one connection, think about this, one connection, one idea, or one opportunity. The connection was William Plon's neighbor that invited him. The idea, this disassembly process. And the third thing, the opportunity. He saw that but took action on it. So, so my challenge for each one of you sitting in here today is before you leave today, I want you to, to keep your mind open to what is your one? What is the thing that you're here to learn? And you might not even know it's coming, right? William Klein didn't. He didn't wake up thinking, boy, I wish I had a great idea today. 
He just stumbled across it. We have the opportunity with the network and the connections and the people that are in this room. I promise you, I know the resumes of a lot of folks in here, and I know the networks of a lot of folks in here. There is electricity. There is opportunity galore right here in this room. But make the connection. Work through the ideas, and you'll have an opportunity if you choose to do that. So we're going to talk a little bit about, um, uh, again, just the one. At the end of the day, I want you to ask each other, Look around the table. You're going to be sitting with these folks throughout the day. And, but, but the question for the day is, what is your one? Fair enough? That sounds like a pretty cool deal. Think about that. What's your one? Uh, we are going to talk about one idea that so, sort of showed up on my planet. There's a, um, there's a company called HPN Books. It's, it reached out to us uh, about a year, year and a half ago and said, we are really interested in, in um, um, documenting and writing a book about the history of Georgia's manufacturing. And, and we understand you know a few folks. And I was like, well, I'm going to learn too. Um, and, and, and we want some help kind of making the connections and, and, and writing this book, The History of, uh, of Manufacturing. And I'm really excited to tell you that we are writing. Um, if, if, you're, if you look through your bag, you'll be able to kind of see a little bit of an overview. I'm not going to go into all that in detail. But we are writing a book. I'm writing this uh, uh, with Charlie Post as a co-writer, and we're writing Manufacturing Success in Georgia. It's illustrated history. Lots of pictures, because that's what I need is lots of pictures. And we're going to be talking about, uh, about the cool stuff that's going on in manufacturing, cool stuff, the history of, of all that we've done. Now, um, typically, if you've ever been to an event with GMA, you know that we always wrap up every event with a simple question. What was your favorite part about today? We're going to add to that just a little bit is what was your one? What's your one? What's the thing that you're walking away with today? Again, I want to welcome you to the Georgia Manufacturing Summit. It is, it, we got a great day lined up for you. We did have one other person that wanted to uh, extend a, a welcome that wasn't able to be here today, but wanted to share this with you. 